Florida is a dream state. There, there are not many dreams. They're probably Hawaii, California, and Florida. I don't think there's an author in South Dakota today giving, giving a talk about the South Dakota dream. University of South Florida historian Gary Marmino. His book, Land of Sunshine, State of Dreams, A Social History of Modern Florida, focuses on the state's amazing transformation in the years following World War II. Unlike many histories, it's not all about Florida politics. The book is not about Florida governors. While I'm, I'm a political junkie, I think by focusing on Tallahassee and gubernatorial misdeeds or deeds and achievements, we miss the big picture. In talking to audiences around the state, the author often begins by asking a question. What changed Florida the most in your lifetime? I suspect you know, already know the answers. A series of revolutions brought about by wartime and post-war technology have reshaped Florida. High on the list, affordable air conditioning. There was really no such thing as residential air conditioning. We adapted to the land and the climate. Air conditioning changes everything, especially the window unit that's introduced in 1950 by Willis Carrier. An air conditioner cost $250. It was expensive to run. But by 1970, more than half the homes in Florida have air conditioning. The automobile and interstate highways have revolutionized Florida. But like everything uh, involving technology, there are consequences. Minorities' neighborhoods typically were the ones bulldozed over. A devastating impact. The interstate highway system was to be a system for military mobilization and, and long-distance vacationers. The idea that you would use it to commute from Dade City to Tampa to, it was not part of the interstate system. Mormino asks older members of his audience to remember how vast areas of Florida before 1950 were a paradise for insects, not people, setting the stage for the introduction of DDT. In 1945, on a cattle farm in Osceola County, they tried the first experiment. And the reports in the paper are fascinating. The, people, the reporters say, my God, this is the miracle pesticide. Places like Sanibel, places like Cape Canaveral were just teeming with mosquitoes. People didn't live on the beach, really, before World War II. Without DDT, you can't imagine the, the explosion in Florida. Among the many other revolutions, the invention of concentrated frozen orange juice that actually tasted good changed the face of Florida agriculture. There's probably no other revolution in, in foodstuffs that became such an instant hit. Almost overnight in the late 40s, Americans went from buying fresh orange juice and squeezing themselves to frozen juice. Is there a better description of this than mixed with three cans of water and stir? The Florida dream beckoned Americans from every social class to come seeking a new life, often in retirement, in newly created retirement centers. There's never been anything quite like them in the history of, of the world, where you have a majority of senior citizens living in these places. Seniors never lived that long. Moreover, they certainly never clustered together in large numbers before the mid-20th century. One thing that has most defined post-war Florida has been runaway, unplanned growth. Mormino equates the technology, the advertising, the many factors that have brought people here with the well-known cartoon in which Mickey Mouse, as the sorcerer's apprentice, tries to stop the broom from bringing more water. And he doesn't know the command to halt the broom, so he takes an ax smashes the broom into a thousand pieces. Each piece becomes a broom disciple carrying pails of water. Finally, the wise sorcerer comes and, and provides the command. And in some ways, this is a perfect parable for modern Florida. How do you stop the growth in, in some ways? How do you stop what brought you here in the first place? Florida's future may see intergenerational conflict, water wars pitting county against county, overcrowded highways, and more. Still, the author sees no sign of a slowdown. There's, what, 20 million baby boomers who are going to want to be near water. What, what is the breaking point when traffic becomes so abominable, when pollution becomes such a problem, will people say, it's just not the Florida that I had envisioned? I mean, many of you remember a Florida in 1950 that you could argue, I mean, you should have seen Florida then. But to someone who sees Florida for the first time, the beach is still the beach. It's easy to lament the parts of Florida that have vanished. Coastal villages, rural areas, wetlands, small towns. Charming places, but they become so popular and overrun. We commemorate them for what was, not what they are now. And it is really the great challenge of modern Florida is how do you preserve for future generations, 
The sorcerer's apprentice doesn't have the answer to that, no, the, nor does the wise sorcerer. Historian Gary Mormino, Land of Sunshine, State of Dreams, published by University Press. I'm Bill Dudley, with funding from the Florida Department of State Division of Cultural Affairs. This report was produced by the Florida Humanities Council.